Welcome to another episode of Backyard Boat Finds. This week we've found something that's super interesting and I've looked at this boat before, funny enough, for our daughter Molly. You remember Molly? It's a bit of a project, but it's probably the earliest fiberglass boat I've ever seen. So here she is, a Creekmore 30. It is a little buried in there, so you're gonna to have to do a bit of digging, but here's what she used to look like. Nice. The Creek Moor 30 was conceived as a racer under the Midget Offshore Racing Rule. Less than 10 were ever built. There is evidence that this one could very well be the first. Many of the boats built by Creekmore were finished by the owners in the boat yard on the Miami River in South Florida. For this reason, we'll find a lot of variations in this model. It was built as a sloop, as a yawl, with a centerboard and rudder trim tab, as well as a fixed keel. This boat is well covered. Uh, it's been under a shelter for the last number of years, and uh, the owner's taken really good care of uh, you know, trying to keep everything under wraps, so to speak. Uh, it is uh, unattended, mind you, so uh, there might be some surprises down below. Ray Creekmore was uh, quite an innovative guy. He was a world traveler. He was quite a noted artist. He also wrote books, and he built sailboats. This was his design. is built in the old school way so in the days when they were building these boats it was really the early years of fiberglass construction nobody knew how to build fiberglass boats and so the hull on this thing is going to be super super thick they also did a lot of things that wooden boat builders would do like teak combings around the cockpit there are teak slats like grates that go over top of all the seats in the cockpit as well so it has a real wooden boat look and a wooden boat feel to it Let's go down below and have a look. Well, it is a little dark down here, folks, but uh, I'll try and uh, give you as much uh, as I can. Um, in fact, I might go down and get my phone and just use it as a as a flashlight, but uh, let's see how this turns out. Basically, all the ports are out of the boat right now, but they're all bronze and all glass. It has a lovely dinette that can fold down, and the dinette is... Uh, makes itself into a double bunk. Below that there's storage of course, so sort of a traditional layout. The early days of fiberglass boat building was a time of great change. Companies that built in the traditional ways incorporated old materials and techniques into their new fiberglass creations. This boat is covered with lovely traditional bronze fittings, including ports, door aids, stanchions, and sail tracks.
The days of finding sailing time capsules like this one are quickly ending. As owners age and retire from the sport, boats like this soon fall into disrepair through neglect and the passage of time. We believe this lovely Creekmore 30 is an artifact worth saving. Couldn't you see yourself on this boat? Stuff is spread around the house a little bit. I uh, went and had a look at the interior fabrics and they're all like a beige tweed and they're all like in new condition, really good shape. Uh, you see this little circular affair right here. Now that's a dome and the purpose of the dome is that you can put it on there in heavy seas and pop your head out and be able to look around without having to go out and get wet. It's a, a really interesting little thing. Old school stuff guys, like you wouldn't see anywhere else. school and on the foredeck Well, certainly not the easiest boat in the world to have a look at, but my goodness, once you're up here, you realize there's a lot going on here. And I think in its day, this was probably really an exceptional boat. She's got a few things going for her that most boats don't, and these were added by other owners, I believe. The, uh, the boat has got a generator in it, which I can't attest to uh, how well it runs. It's got an electrical system that gives it effectively 110 volts down below, but it's so archaic it would need to all be torn out. It's got a Palmer Johnson gas engine, which our international harvester, I believe, have got the parts for those yet. So that would be something you could get running again, but again, a little diesel wouldn't be uh, out of the question. Or an electric conversion boat, this would be a good, good one for it. It is really a classic platform, and I think I mean, it's going to be a lot of work, but uh, if someone were to buy this and paint it, uh, clean everything out of it, remove most of the electrical, or redo the electrical, uh, fix the engine or replace it, uh, get rid of the generator and get some solar on here, you could get it upgraded. It would be a real classic platform. Uh, the bronze hardware is just lovely all over the boat. Even the stanchions, even the stanchions are bronze, so. I mean, it would it'd be a head turner coming to the dock, but it'd probably take you a year to get it looking good enough again to take it out on the water. Another thing that's unique about this boat is that it does have a, um, a sort of a centerboard affair that extends the rudder. You can change the surface area of the rudder to affect the lee helm or weather helm on the boat. Just a real beautiful, beautiful little backyard boat. Now the owner of this boat, uh, he would like to get rid of it. Uh, he's willing to entertain some offers. So uh, 
It does come on a trailer. It is stored under cover, but there would be a fair amount of work to remove all the wood and debris that's around it and to get it uh, towed somewhere. But it looks like the tires aren't too bad on the trailer. I mean, you could probably in an afternoon get it cleaned out and move somewhere. So, a lovely little backyard gem. So uh, I'd like to introduce you to Harry. Harry uh, uh, is the owner of this boat and you've sailed it for how many years, Harry? I purchased it, I believe it was 1962. 62. Wow. Huh. It's, it's either 60 or 62. I can't remember that far back. Huh. My goodness. I think it's 60. Yeah. So you've had this boat since it was almost new. It was. Yeah, you, you uh, brought it from Florida. And where have you sailed her? Well, we went all the way to the, from Canada to the Exumas and all that stuff. And yeah. back and we did that basically twice. Yeah. And it's sailed here in Northern Ontario or yeah. in Ontario, different places. The Great Lakes you've done? Yes, yeah, certainly. Georgian Bay? Yeah. We, wow. we, you know, we spent the whole summer just paddling from one end to the other. Wow, huh? Beautiful. Different years, of course. Yeah, yeah. Ever thought of buying another boat, a bigger boat, or? No, I'm well, just not able of handling it physically anymore. Yeah, I'm in yeah. the 80s now. So You're in your 80s. you got to quit sometime. Well, if uh, somebody were to uh, show an interest in this boat, uh, we can hand them uh, your phone number and they can chat with you about this. Is that uh, good with you? I think that makes sense. Yeah, okay. Well, hopefully we've got some young person out there that uh, wants to walk in your footsteps. And have some elbow grease. And have some elbow <laughs> grease. <laughs> Tell us about the electrical on this because it's crazy. It's got everything electrical because that's what I am. Yeah. Electrical man. Yeah. And uh, it had everything. Like for us, the lighting is all in there. Yeah. And uh, you name it. You've got it. huge capacitors down below, I noticed, and, uh, and all kinds of wiring uh, to the generator, eh? There's a generator down below. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what is it, an Onan generator? Is it? That's correct. Yeah? That's correct. Okay. Which is, which is strictly a marine generator. Yeah, yeah. So that generator gave you 110 volts through the whole oh, yeah. boat? That's it. Wow. Huh? Every light works. And of course it's battery too. Yeah, yeah. It depends on some of our battery only, but no. Yeah. They both. That, that's a lot of because stuff you for... you can charge the battery to do the 110. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of stuff on here for a 30-foot boat. There is. Yeah, beautiful. Every, every, every time it was being picked out, lift out for put it on the trailer or thing, the crane operator overestimated the weight on it. Yeah. And he ended up lowering it, trying to pick it up, yeah. and move forward again closer to the boat. Yeah. To get the, to get the. Yeah. So. Well, the displacement on these boats is supposed to be 9,000 pounds, but it sounds to me like it's a little bit heavier than that, then. Well, I don't want to... I'm going by memory, which is pretty lousy, but uh, I think we're talking about 12 to 14. Really? Wow, that's a lot for a 30-footer. For but that, that I, you know, it's not, it must, I never yeah. paid any attention to that, because I know yeah. it's extremely heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, every time... They picked it out for putting it in the winter or solar, and they all, every one of them, they, you know, they wouldn't go close enough to it. Yeah, yeah. And they would boom it out too far. And I mean, I've had it, I've had the wheels coming up from, from the crane. Really, really, yeah. yeah. But I said, well, I warned you, it's heavy. Yeah, you know? yeah. But anyway. Well, that's beautiful. Well, Harry, thank you very much for letting us come here. And uh, I think this is the most interesting backyard boat we've ever shown. And I uh, just want to thank you for uh, giving us your time. We appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Yeah. Although Creekmore never had the success of some of their competitors, one of their designs went on to enjoy a long production run. In 1977, John Brooks and Rob Valdez found the Creekmore 34 molds abandoned on the Miami River. They cut them in half, added three feet, and the Endeavor 37 was born. The long 
water line, narrow beam, large skeg hung rudder, and heavy construction make the Creek Bore 30 a great option for the budget minded blue water sailor. The addition of a few modern amenities and electronics would enhance an already capable platform. Harry's Creekmoor 30 comes complete with nearly new interior cushions, mainsail, hank on head sails, mast, and rig, bronze ports, ground tackle, generator, and a heavy duty road trailer. Just about all one would need to sail her locally. Energy and cleansers not included. Well, that was really interesting. You know, there are plenty of these kinds of boats laying around in backyards, in barns, in people's garages, and just waiting for somebody to come and uh, take it on as a little project. So I think we're really privileged to see this boat. I want to thank Harry again for being so accommodating to us. And uh, I want to invite you all back next week when uh, we've got another backyard boat find to share with you. Uh, if you really enjoy these videos, you can always take part by joining us on Patreon. Uh, we have people who kick in a little bit to help support the making of the videos. Also, if you want to uh, help us out, you could uh, click that su subscribe button down below and press on the little bell. And that'll uh, help us with YouTube as well get us noticed a little more so thanks a lot for joining us we'll see you next time Okay, we've been planning on doing this for a little while. This boat is probably one of the earliest. Oh, shoot. Talk to me.